Okay, my honeys. So today we are doing the knotless medium box braids. Um, you want to start off by making your section so that therefore you will be organized because if you got hair all over the place, it throws you off. And it seems to go a little quicker when you have sections already mapped out like, okay, next, okay, next. So that's just what I am doing there, is making my sections. And she just wanted box braids, so I know that knotless is the way to go because it's like a feed-in braid, but it's single. So it was quite interesting. And I'm like, okay, well, everyone has them skinny. Let's try to do them medium because she didn't want those little braids. So... So this is just one pack of hair that I open and I am going to take five small sections out of that bunch of hair. So when you're doing a feeder, you will break from smallest piece to biggest piece. So I'm just gonna break out five pieces. Um, two of them was the smallest and then the other three uh, gradually got bigger so they wasn't consistently bigger like all the same size but they gradually got bigger so you want to have everything ready set go before you start your braid and start putting on any type of jam or whatever so once you have your little five sections out oh and make sure that the first two are like the skintiest so you can get that more knotless effect so that is just uh, that shine jam is in the purple jar. And um, that helps you with them parts, honey. Like you throw that on, you part, don't worry about getting it all straight when you first part it while it's nappy. When you throw that jam over that part, that's when you're gonna focus on getting it at its straightest. Now what you wanna do is have a clean go through. So like right here, I am parting, but I will have took the back of that comb and went from ear to ear as straight as possible, one clean swipe. Because I noticed when you go back in over the jam that you already had, it's like you re you have to keep doing it, keep doing it just to get it right. When you do one clean swipe across as straight as possible, it's cool. Like you don't have to go back in and keep fixing it. But that jam is life to those perfect, perfect parts. So I'm mapping out these sections, honey, so therefore we can get this done as quick as possible. So with that being said, you use those little clips to get it all out the way. If you have any little hairs in your way, it can throw you off. And then at that point, it seems like, oh my God, it's taking forever. So any little thing matters to kind of get rid of the time. But as you can notice, I keep going in on this part because I'm not doing it a clean swipe. So... It's even a little crooked to me. And it's like it would just never work. And even if you put more jam on it, sometimes it seems like it doesn't really work. But you want to comb that product through that whole little section. Because if you have 4C hair, your ends are going to be very thick. <laughs> so right here, I am starting the process. When you're starting a single braid, you would always bust down that section to three single parts. So basically that was one square. I just busted down to three, okay? Now you got your right hand and your left hand, basically. This is how braid go. So you got three sections, boom. You're gonna have one section in your left hand you're gonna have one section in your right hand. That little section in the middle, it just be dangling there. You swipe that right hand over to that left, grab that one in the top that's just loose in the middle, swipe that around that bottom, grab everything out that right. You see, you still got that one at that top that's just gonna always dangle. Okay, so again, you have your three little sections in that one block. You grab all three sections, but you're basing it on your right hand, left hand. That right hand goes under everything to grab what's in that left hand. Take that little piece at that top. It goes under everything 
and grab everything from that right hand. That top part is gonna always dangle. So now you're gonna go add in your hair, your first little piece between that index and that thumb. You swiping that over, under and over, and you're gonna swipe under and over. And that's just pretty much how a braid could consistently go. So you're gonna add in another piece your second piece in between that index and that thumb grab what's at that top swoop it on over to that left hand grab what's at that top swoop it all over to that right hand you're gonna add your third piece Now you would see how your braid would consistently get bigger. You could stop adding pieces if you feel like you had your desired look, okay? So if you're like, okay, this is the size I want, I'll go here. Because you really don't be knowing how many pieces to exactly use and stuff like that. So a little trick for me is I would just put out a whole bunch of pieces, you know, when I'm doing a regular feeder. I'll just put out a whole bunch of pieces, and I'll be using them, using them, using them. Now, once I get the first braid, now that's pretty much your size, what you need every braid to be. So now at this point, I'm just going to keep adding pieces until the next braid looks just like the one before. So it ain't really no science to how many exact pieces that you would use. That's my dumb down way of doing it. I just add pieces till it looks like a decent size for me. But anywho... We got a few more braids that we're going to go to, and I am definitely going to go into detail on breaking that down. But I just want to stress at this point, the uh, clips are very important to keep other hairs out the way. I have big hands, big fingers, so I'm always grabbing hair from other sections for some reason, messing up my pods. And oh, it's aggravating. So I just try to make sure I have everything out the way. You could even take the jam and slick down the areas around your braid out of your way so that plays a big role in that as well and this right here is a knotless box braid so i really like it it doesn't have that big major knot it looks like it's growing from her scalp and i think that's the point of these knotless braids because we don't want it to look fake okay we want it to look as realistic as possible so i do kind of Think that that braid looks wonderful for her then i you know show her the braid show her the size and make sure it was okay with her y'all do that at the beginning with your client now because then you get halfway through and they're like i didn't want it like this and then what okay so <laughs> you keep them posted on every move that you're making because at the end of the day you want them satisfied i liked it that size but did she like it okay so you have to make sure they are as comfortable as you are with that as well when parting okay uh you would always go in and part your map so map out what you're about to do once you map it out part it okay this is how i want this section you always are going to go in with the jam or whatever product you're using. You're always going to go in with that. That helps to straighten out that part to the T. Okay, so um, that jam is life. Sometimes I always use a whole jar on the client because every single part needs jam, period. Look at little KJ. He had just woke up and she wanted to meet him. She hadn't met him yet. And he was just so vibrantly happy. Just looking around for me like, where is she at? <laughs> Who's this woman talking to me? Okay, but he met her. They was all playful and love with each other. So, you know, everybody love KJ. Here we go, y'all. Take them three sections. Once you get into a rhythm, it's easy. See, that jam helps to push everything out that way. I still find myself messing up my part, though, <laughs> these big old hands. 
Okay, so once you do your first crossover, we're going to call it. So you done swoop the left, then you swoop the right. Boom. You would immediately start adding in that hair. Okay. It looks more natural. The braid will be more consistent. Okay. So you could do a couple of crossovers. Okay. One, two, three, four. And then start adding. Okay. I feel like that's too much weight on your actual hair. Okay, guys, we're going to build this reference so we know what we're talking about when we say crossover, okay? So, you have your three sections, okay? I'm right-handed, so I'm taking my right over to my left, grabbing everything over there. I'm going to grab this piece from the top and swing it around under everything and grab everything out of my right hand. Tautly, guys. This is how you get that good grip. Tautly. That's one crossover right there, okay? Before I added that hair, that was one complete crossover. Now here I go going on my second crossover, okay? My right went over to my left. My left went back to the right. That's two crossovers right there. So that's what I'm going to mean when I say crossovers to you guys, okay? So basically, like I said, if you did three or four crossovers before you added your hair, okay, that's a knotless braid. And then as you start adding hair, depending on how big, like these braids will have been too big for that because it's too much weight on your actual hair. Mind you, these braids are going to be long, okay? No one has these braids to wear their short, so... They're going to be pretty long swinging every day for the months that you have them in or even the weeks. Like, that's wear and tear on that hair. But right here, guys, I'm about to show you how you steal hair, okay? So, you always have a grip on two strands of the hair. That third strand is just dangling there is what you would steal from and put to the side that you need it. You would never steal from the back and bring it to the front. It will make a bulky braid. So, that's just how I steal hair. And I have approached the end of her hair. So you see how her hair is now looking all 4CE or whatever. <laughs> you would just take that jam, slick it on down, blend it with the actual synthetic hair, and then proceed to braiding. You don't want to leave that curliness hanging out of those braids. Because it will make the braids look older, quicker, and the style isn't even that old. When you have your three little sections mapped out, you want to grip them as close to the scalp as possible. That's how you're going to get a nice tight braid, guys. But you do want to give some leeway because you don't want to uh, have it so tight that their scalp is about to bleed, you know. So I think you will have an eye for that. Like, okay, let me not do it this tight, but this tight is acceptable because the tighter, the better that they can take it, okay. But anywho, when you are crossing your fingers over from right to left, left to right, whatever, your fingers get in your way, and that's what could mess up your tightness, and then it would appear loose. So look closely. I'm taking my right, swooping under to that left. I'm grabbing everything over there. I'm talking from the part on, okay? No strands, left out. Now, here's where you will get loose. Like, your whole demonstration right there could loosen up. You see how my fingers are touching and rubbing, and that's going to happen. But you do not want to let go of the grip that you have from the hair. Don't lose sight of the hair. It's going to maintain strong. You see, my thumb and my index is just waiting to pinch that hair. It's coming. It's coming. I opened up those fingers just a little bit and 
ripped that hair. I pulled it back to blend it. I'm going to proceed right to left, left to right, like nothing just happened, okay? Don't let the strands confuse you and do all that because it's quite simple once you get it through those fingers to just proceed to do your crossover, okay? You're going to add a piece of hair after every crossover until you get your desired size. That's pretty much it. So this here is my second small strand, I would say. I'm going to proceed to do my crossover. I'm going to add another strand. And I'm going to proceed to do my crossover. Now, once this crossover is complete, guys, you will kind of look at it and say, hmm, what size is this? You know, it's kind of too soon to tell, but that's just how you would map it out. You know, this is exactly how I grab the hair to even add it in. That's just one strand. I swoop my thumb underneath there. Brought my fingers out to grab everything. I just want a nice, taut piece of hair like that. So when I go to put it in there, it flows in easily. Perfect. I hope this makes sense, guys. Leave me a comment if you are confused about anything. I'll do another video and break it down. Pretty much, you got two strands of that once you get it in there. So, you know where the strands go to because it's already set in stone once you put it in there. Okay, you got three strands there. Two strands are going somewhere. I'll proceed with my crossover. I think one strand went to that top one that be dangling, and then the other strand went to one of the strands in the finger. But once you continue with your crossover, it's not nothing to really worry about with it. You're just going to continue on with it like you never even added that because don't try to figure it out. Just do it. <laughs> okay? It's still going to be beautiful. And when you go to braid that hair, you know, you want to make sure you get all that 4 ness tucked in there. So it doesn't hang out. You know, our hair is very curly. So any little strand of it is, would just stick out somewhere. Then you will be cutting that off. But you take that jam, honey, and you keep it moving. Just let it flow. Hold your braid taut. You see how my thumbs are pretty much close together every time I go in to do a crossover? My thumbs come right back together. Every time. That is just holding that hair in place, honey. So when I go to cross it over, it ain't going to curl back up on me, foil back up on me. It's just going to be smoothly tucked how I put it, never going anywhere. That braid right there alone would last for months because it's tightly, tautly in there. Them thumbs is gripping around. That product is smoothing that hair in there. When it dries, it's like a spritz. It keeps it in place, you know? So keep everything tight and taut with this whole process. The whole way down the braid, okay? Look at my thumbs. They're besties. <laughs> Thank you.
And here we are, seven hours later, we used five to six packs, and it is gorge. My client is lovely and very satisfied. She did love her hair, guys. I did too. Medium knotless box braids. Let me know what y'all think about these. Anywho. You have to go in and kind of finish it off. You need to go cut off those little hairs that be sticking all out and all that. And you just cut them. You cut them. You would bend that braid back like that to really get good in there and get them. So basically, when you braid that, bend that little braid back. Boop, 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 boop. Cut, 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 cut. Now, you're going to cut as much of those off as you can. You can't get every one of them, okay? You can't get all of them. But you could get enough so that the appearance of them would seem like they disappeared. They're gone, okay? You put all your braids up. These braids were so flexible, guys. Like, it wasn't... She didn't have any type of pain or, if you noticed, nothing. You know, like, I was able to just move them on around, you know? And you, you move them around, you lift them up, you get them little stickies from the back too. Okay? Because if she wants to wear her hair up when she left my house, we wouldn't want that to still be there. So, um, typically you could go through each braid and cut that stuff. But I just like to do what's visible. You know, because at the same time, I'm going to go in and burn these braids too. <laughs> so, I'm going to cut off as much as I can. And then I'm going to let the, the fire burn off the rest okay so you can have a nice smooth braid pretty much you know so then after that i dipped them in the hot water so it's like whatever was left after that that hot water surely did mold it and you know 
lay the hairs down and just made my braid appear more smoother, you know? So she loved it. She said they were very lightweight. She said that they were, you know, flexibility. Like if we, we were moving it around and it was just able to bend and turn and they were gorgeous. So I really like this method for, you know, the tender headed ones. <laughs> if you are tender headed, this is your style, honey, because it's not that much pressure. When you add the hair before you do all of that um the three strand thing it makes it even more taut guys that's what makes it a tight braid and it's like a couple days you can't move your neck but this was just really look more flexible it wasn't even like anything going on as far as paying for her you know and she just was like yeah i liked it this idea because she really just wanted box braids like i said but I said, you know what, I'm going to do this knot list thing for you. And she's like, what is that? Here you go, girl. And she loved it, though, in her little color. I think that was a 27 blind she threw in. And she had a number four hair. Because her hair is number four. It's very brown. Beautiful. She's very beautiful. You're so nasty, man. So, yeah, guys, this is it. Please leave me a comment below of what you think. Okay, I'm planning it to show you guys that it's no hassle. Like, she's calm, ready to go to sleep. Those parts are straight thanks to the product. Okay. Oh, tell me. Where you passy? Where you passy? Y'all know KJ always right here by my side now. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you are new here, Hansi, please go ahead and subscribe and check us out. Because we are out here, you know. And we are definitely not letting none of that bother us. So, if you want to be a part of Kale's Nation, because clearly, we about to do our thing, okay? Don't miss out. Then just go ahead and subscribe and click that bell. But other than that, I will see you guys on the next video. <laughs> the next one. I'm pretty sure y'all doing a dance for it. Mwah.